before we get started, I do have to mention the fact that these albums, the how I rate them, they're not based upon the best sound quality, the best features, the best anything really. They're based upon how I view this album as an entirety and how many tracks I got out of it. So let's say there's 20 tracks on the album, right? And I like 10 of them. And then there's another album that has 20 tracks and only five of them. I'm gonna rate, I'm gonna rate the one that I like 10 tracks out of over 20 versus the one that I like five out of. For I feel like that that's pretty that's pretty obvious, right? Why I would do that. So you guys can understand more into why I'm gonna do this. Anyways, my my favorite and most disappointing albums for me personally of the year. At number six, we have Ballads by Joji One. I'm gonna have my initial review down in the description box below. But anyways, in that review, I criticized the album for basically hyping itself up by releasing the best songs. From, from it prior to the release, it overall affected how I looked at the rest of the album as a whole. I wasn't a fan of all the songs and how they experimented with alternate sounds for instrumentals. And revisiting it, I found myself only still entertained by about half of the tracks it had, which in total had 12. And my problem was that a large portion of each track was taken up by long sections of pure music with no lyrics. I personally find that lazy. And unless I like what's going, what's playing, or has any positive effect towards the, the overall value of the song, I don't, I don't like that. And in my opinion, it rarely does that. I've changed my mind about liking songs like Wanted You, R.I.P., and Xanax. On the other hand, I do like songs like Attention Now, though I'm still not a fan of the, the distorted audio has like right in the middle of it. Anyways, my love for Joji is the one that stands alone on by its own. My joy for him when he was in his when he was back being filthy frank doesn't carry over here, and I feel like a lot of people can say that, which is why I feel a lot of his prior fans that don't like his current music now are really like whiny and bitchy about it and say he has really mediocre music and if you think he's medi mediocre music that's all fine and dandy because uh, honestly he's not like a top 10 R&B artist or anything he has somewhat of a melodramatic kind of generic uh, tone to his music but I personally like it pretty well and the fact that I still listen to all these songs and all that I think is somewhat is um, even, even from the EP I still listen to a lot of his music I, I would say about 56% of his music I still listen to, not including the remixes. I'm not a fan of remixes, and I've heard them, and I'm not really a fan of them. But anyways, I, it's probably my, this is, yeah, it's probably one of my least favorite, but still one of my favorite uh, albums of the year. And if I had to give it my favorite song for this, it'd probably be Test Drive, just because it's, it's simplicity, but still, like, even the music really makes it even that much better, though. It's kind of weird. I was debating whether Slow Dancing in the Dark was, but I don't listen to that song because often, so I gotta go with Test Drive here. At number five, we have question mark by XXX and Tassion. I found myself liking this way more than Skins by a lot since I found myself listening to a lot of his songs on this album. For me, X has always been that guy who I hear his songs and sad edits, whether it's Bart Simpson edits or just cartoony edits here and there. And he's been getting a bit of a soft spot for me since he's always been someone I find myself listening to more often than not compared to my other music. He's nothing special, but his ability to turn simple lyrics on their head, making something out of them really impresses me. He doesn't use explosive beats or lavish production to get his songs across. For the most part, a lot of his music is consistent flow, mood, and lyrics, which which sucks because obviously we're not going to hear anything more from him. At least nothing really that big, I guess you could say. like Nothing like a full strength, full length album or anything because he's obviously passed. Anyways, um, Infinity 88 probably beats out Remedy for a Broken Heart on this, mostly because of the whole Joey's 90s-esque rap rapping at the beginning um and there, there was a lot of tracks on like those that being said there are the tracks i don't listen to anymore i want to say uh, half the tracks i don't listen to i would still listen to them today such as numb changes and like a few others that i don't have on my personal playlist because obviously x is as a his his whole tone is uh depressing this this and that right it's sad in general so obviously <laughs> Um, you guys don't know me as in, in person, but I'm a very out there type of person, you know, like hype, hype me up and all that type of shit, so that type of, those type of songs typically have to wait, so, but uh, again, I, I really like this album, and again, Infinity AA, my favorite song of this. At number four, I have Scorpion for Drake, and at this point in time, I feel like people just don't get the same feeling when Drake drops an album, since he seems to drop one before we're even done enjoying the last one, which leads me to believe the market is sort of oversaturated by him himself like his music his type of music almost is oversaturating itself I, again I, I i don't know how to perfectly phrase this but that's just kind of what i'm getting at here and um it just makes things harder on himself honestly because he's putting people off from his music when there's already a 
decent amount out of it there and people are just dismissing it as half-assed nothing special depending on who you ask this is probably the most forgettable album of the summer let alone the year i forget, I forget his name I'm, I'm blanking on it right now but this is basically i think like the first song that came out out of this to like basically hype up the album was just the uh, uh the retaliation i guess from, from like what was his name push the t or something like that when that came out and like snitched about him having a daughter or and everything like that and I think that was really stupid on his part because it's none of his business regardless. And let me say, going back and listening to the songs like Emotionless Survival and Nonstop remind me of why Drake is so held so highly in the rap game. Not even, not, not to mention the fact that he had songs, I guess those quote unquote bangers like God's Plan, Upset, and In My Feelings. I mean, that whole song inspired a whole challenge on itself. People getting out of their car and like fucking the dance and everything. I mean, I wasn't a fan of it. I'm pretty sure you're probably not a fan of it just because of how, how tired most people have grown out of it. But if I have to guess, not, not even mention any of the songs, my favorite song probably had to be Don't Matter to Me with the whole Michael Jackson bit in there. That, I don't know what that was, but like, I don't know. That, 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 that really did it for me. But again, it was low-key one of the more forgettable albums of the year. It came out in June, June 30th. It came like right in the middle of the summer, so... It, I think it wasn't exactly good timing, but I did listen to a lot of the songs for a pretty long time, only until like August or September for the most part, but a lot of these songs, they're, they're not exactly meant to be put on the radio or this or that. I feel like they have their own time and mood, just like most songs, but these ones are a bit more specific time and moody. And number three, I have Love Me By Now by Tori Lanez, and honestly, this wasn't even like hard between love me now and memories don't die like i was so disappointed with that album and i'll go more into that why spoiler it's a part of my most disappointing albums list that when i heard this was coming out i was excited but extremely cautious because i was worried i was going to have the same disappointment and i was i've never been that really big on tory lane i have enjoyed his music for the most part but i have never really truly followed his career and what he's done but especially when he, when it comes to other feature tracks he's on, I really think he shines and he's able to show off that lyrical talent. When he's just like bits and pieces here though. Though in his albums, uh, for me personally, it's not always there. Uh, anyway, but I, like I said, I barely liked anything from his prior project. That being said, I came out I came out of Love, Love Me Now with a lot of music. I couldn't listen to 7 of the 15 tracks from the album. My biggest knock of the album is its overuse of features, as you could easily make the argument that the features carry the album to such a good level that it's like, is Tori really the one like that makes his album good, or is it all the features and the money he put in on this? But I mean, for what for what it is, regardless of what it is, it's still obviously Tori's album, and he does a great job with it. Honestly, uh, he has it's your. It's your music, yet I find myself enjoying your features more, though. I, I, I don't know. I just feel the need to really mention that personally. And uh, it's an even mix, though, because it doesn't really affect my overall enjoyment, honestly, this, despite my kind of pounding down on it. It has soothing love tracks, which obviously is its Tory Lanez. And it also has the get out my face, I got more hoes than you kind of uh, mentality at the same time. And I honestly, what could you expect? What, what could you really expect? My... Uh, my favorite track on this album probably had to be You Thought, because it mixes both of those pretty well, and <laughs> I, I, I really love the album cover out with the whole, like, Muppets thing with the nine squares, and then, or ten squares or whatever, and then the whole, no, it was nine, it was nine, and then the fact that all the, all the song titles were, like, uh, looked like that Spongebob meme, I, I just personally love that, but yeah, it's my, my third, I got my third favorite album of the year, I guess. And number two, we have K.O.D. by J. Cole. And I kind of wanted to put this at three, but going into this album, I initially wasn't sure whether I wanted, I wasn't sure if we were going to get more Forest Hills Drive or Fire Rise Only. I guess luckily, although I did like Forest Hills Drive more because I feel like everyone liked it more to a certain extent, um, or at least in a certain uh perspective they liked it more with the whole it was something you could a lot you could buy to a lot easier anyways we got a bit of both the album cover is the embodiment of a picture is worth a thousand words the first three songs are a clear message are, are all three clearly driven messages that have their own uh you know 
message to it. And personally, personally, I'm not a fan of that typically. But I like a certain coherent message and the constant flow of it, I guess, being that. And, and the same general idea of what you're talking about. But that just completely goes out the window with this. Uh, Cole's older than 90% of his fan base. Yeah, he 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 can relate to them like 90% of them just so easily. And mm, Cole's never been shy about re, like exploring his issues with with him about himself or how he views things. And that's clearly evident in things like photograph because he's talking about how relationships have so changed this whole social media era. And this overall like we don't connect to each other the way we used to. Uh, there's no and then there's no difference. When it comes to window pane, the cutoff, and because they're both talking about, we'll take window pane for example. Well, they're talking about the ripple effects of how your actions, although they may not directly affect somebody, they can and possibly will uh, later down the line. And then we have the cutoff, which comes in. I mean, you can probably guess what it's about, but it's about his friends eating, trying to eat off Cole's plate, even though his plate of success, I should say, because. It kind of reminds me of the 2K15-16 scene where like it's like A on um, this guy blah blah. Ugh, never mind. Don't just pretend I didn't say that. Anyways, it just talks about how they're eating off of his place, play to success, and basically they're acting like they owe him for basically being there, even though they haven't really done anything for anything really. And it just shows how fast they'll turn on you. The the album as a whole has a lot of these uh, ideas and messages, and I think they do them extremely well. And well. Yeah, the album just does the rest of the same. And I think it's really solid. There's a lot of mixed ideas here and there. It doesn't hold back because, I mean, J. Cole never has. And my favorite song probably has to be K.O.D. because it's, it's a low-key banger. Low-key, low-key. Before I want to say my number one album is, I do have to mention, I do have my own real mention. And that is my Dear Melancholy and the Black Panther soundtrack. And... Well, coming quickly after the weekend and, and Selena broke up, it released with only six songs. Fair enough, since it was pretty, really, really quickly after they broke up. And it took a bit for me to really get into it, honestly. That being said, I still listen to songs like Call Out My Name, Wasted Times, and I was never there. I find it very unimpressive, though, out of six songs, I only like three, because you would think. You, you would think I just like all six, but. Anyways, it, you know, that's, that's just personal taste. Maybe that comes with the fact that it sort of came out as if they he had it ready prior to the breakup. At least it just sounds like that. No, like, there's clearly, there's clearly production value, like a decent amount of it, uh, uh, at least, behind this. But it still sounds rushed, like I said, like he, like he had this planned. That being said, I still listen to a lot of these songs, like I already mentioned. And the beats were reminiscent of Beauty Behind the Madness, but not as much as one would hope. Voice of Times is my favorite song, though. Calling My Name was the first song that really got me into this whole thing, but Wasted Time is a song I listen to more more, more now. Anyways, as for the Black Panther soundtrack, well, I didn't want to count it as an actual album because there's so many people on this that you can make the argument that Kendrick, Kendrick leads it, though it's not really his album because it is the, the, you know, the movie's album, so I didn't really think that should count. Anyways... Uh, like I guess there's so many artists on this, and that one really has the biggest takeaway from it. Also, some songs just don't do a good job of standing on their own compared to when it's in the movie, such as Bloody Waters, Redemption with Bay's one. Wadumbo? Wadumbo? I, I don't say I don't know how to say that, sorry. Uh, or, or Ops. But the songs that can't stand on their own really stand on their ground, such as The Ways, All the Stars, Paramedic, and Pray for Me, which I listen to constantly. And my favorite being. Paramedic. I don't think that was much of a surprise. Alright, so let's get into my number one album of the year. Let me get a drum roll. It's Ye by Kanye. Uh, I clearly remember anticipating this for a whole month upon knowing it was coming out. I had recently gotten back into his music with all the drama surrounding him at the time. I was very much ready for him to address it in this album, but what we got was much darker, unforgiving, and raw as could be. A lot of money was clearly put into this project, and none of it went to waste. From the chilling I thought by killing you today to the glorious ghost town banging on every drum, making you feel alive and wanting that girl Cuddy was after to really fall in love with him. Sorry. The album looks at Kanye's bipolar disorder from every perspective, going crazy and contemplating murder, coming down from it and being almost scared of his thoughts that he has, believing that his bipolarism isn't actually a hindrance, but it but actually a factor as to what makes him so much more eccentric than everyone else. Lastly, I ha lastly how it can make me feel more complete and compassionate. It felt me want, it left me wanting more. 
just so much more honestly I didn't listen to the, I, there's no song that I didn't like on this album I loved every song of it and I feel like it's difficult for a music fan in general but for me <laughs> being the picky uh, song listener and the critic I'm trying to be right now it's even harder than that I don't listen to I do have to admit I don't listen to many of the songs or like all the, any songs really at all other than Ghost Town but that's because these songs they they are very very more they are very much stories compressed into musical rhythms and I'm sorry but th- this album as a whole I know I kind of said this at the beginning but it is everything that you would want from a Kanye album and he just does it so well and all these songs are pretty every lyric <laughs> even the yeah, none of us right here without come like even lyrics like that where there is all done so well and they all make you feel something in such a such a good and out there way and this and, that. and even though again I'm not a fan of the um, no actually no all, all of these songs had to do with the bipolarism and the fact that they're they are able to portray it in such a way that you don't look at it as like a disease or a hindrance or anything at all anymore I guess you could say at least for these the the what the, like the 20 minutes his album is he he embraces it in the best possible way he embraces it by saying no it's not it's not a disability it's a superpower you know and I absolutely love that and <laughs> and make you love me <laughs> Cody dude <laughs> Cody I mean my bad uh, Ghost Town favorite song dude Favorite song of that album, in case you didn't get it. That being said, though, we have to now get into my most disappointing albums of the year. So, let's get into it. I'm really not a negative person, honestly. So, I didn't have all that much to say about why. Though, I do hope this will satisfy you as to why. And this isn't going to end any number, because I don't know how I could be more disappointed with one album than the other. Well, actually, no, you, you can't be. You can really list that. But I won't because I, I'm i so disappointed either way. Anyways, the first one we're going to be is East, East Atlanta Love Letter by Six Lack. And I haven't even been that big of a Six Lack fan. But when I when I heard this was coming out after the whole song uh, On The Way, which I fucking love that song, dude. Um, I was expecting more free Six Lack. But instead, I got the songs that... Songs that don't sound like music, but just more like statements with rhythm to the, to them. And I just couldn't get with it. Something about it. I don't know if it was just going too slow for me, or if it just didn't have enough pop to it, or maybe I was just expecting the wrong thing. Probably that. I just, I nothing. I didn't enjoy it honestly from the beginning to the end. I didn't didn't like it at all. Um, Stay dangerous, which. To be blunt about it, it just sounds like a discount version of Still Brazy, and I was hoping for more of that. I think YG is a fantastic artist as a whole, and I love that he's actually about that life, and he puts that into his music, and he's open about it, at least as open as you can be about it, and all this and that. But that being said, it doesn't change my opinion on Stay Dangerous. I just don't think it was all that great of an album, and I don't feel as if he really captured the uh, the whole gangster-esque and the... 90-ish vibes he tries to present himself with in this album and the fact that he relied a lot on features again I'm not a fan of that either though I do think they can really raise an album when they're not doing much of anything to actually help you I feel like just weighs it down and that's kind of what I'm getting from here too beer bongs and Bentleys he went even more emo with this honestly and his songs don't have the same punch his features didn't do much of a favor either as they don't really fit the overall tone with Ray Schremer, 21 Savage, and uh, one of the person I'm forgetting for the main ones. And even the songs they're involved in don't really, it doesn't really do him any favors. And other than Iverson and Better Now, I really didn't get anything out of this. I mean, yes, I like two songs, but it doesn't save it from being disappointing as a whole. So, yeah. Anyways, next one, uh, Shrem. This... I talked about this in, a, in my Syntax Rap video. I'll have that link down below if you guys care to listen. Uh, this is what SoundCloud rappers do, and it makes this just so much more disappointing where they'll, where they'll make so much music, but they won't really... 
I'll put it this way. SoundCloud rappers, they make 50 songs, they throw them out there, and they hope five of them stick for however many people listen to them, right? And they expect to get exposure and to get big off that, right? The difference here is the quality. But there's actual production value behind this, and the features, and it actually had good features, not just his buddies, not just some of the guy's buddies or whatever, right? That being said, that's what this is for me, basically. I didn't, I hardly liked anything on this album at all. And even the songs that I did like, I can't even think of them right now, because they all just sounded the same, just with different people on it, and... Honestly, I just want more of the original Shrem Life. Shrem Life 2 was okay, but I like the original one better. I'm wa I want more of that, and I'm not getting that. We're getting farther and farther away from that. So, yeah, it was disappointing to say the least. Uh, if anything, it's probably the most disappointing, but I'm not really going to bother to make that argument. Uh, Memories Don't Die. I already mentioned that earlier. I don't know what it was, but it just wasn't for me. The songs didn't affect me at all, and they sounded good lyrically and solid, uh, like... Be instrumental wise but other than skirt skirt shooters and uh dance for me i just couldn't vibe with it i don't know what it was about the album i just I, something about it just didn't really i think it's i, I kind of had the same problem with the six lap one where maybe it was just off tone or just different from what i was expecting but i just really couldn't get with it oh uh next one hey man dude i don't know what the I didn't even know this was an album until I actually looked at Brian, Rich Brian, because I had I had this song uh, Glow Like That and what was the other one? Uh, Introvert. I had them because uh, I I got them from what's it called the Spotify. Uh, Here's made for you, right? I got them from there, but I didn't even know these were part of the whole album. I just kind of figured this was cover off from singles he released or whatever. So when I actually found out this was an album, I was like, okay, let me check this out. I'm gonna probably like this right nope i didn't like it at all this guy as much as it pains me to say it R rich brian is just rice skin but without without being an asshole like and i guess without the less flexiness he's more melodramatic more joji and i'm not a fan of that i don't think he does it very well and his his, his twitter commentary is more entertaining than his music at this point to me and lastly well, I have one honorable mention, and even though I rated it high, I do have a I do have a review. I'll leave, I'll leave it down in the description below again. Um, skins, ten tracks, fifteen minutes. I like the experimentation of it, and there was like there was like two songs I liked from it, bad, and like one other one. I can't remember what it is, or it might have just been bad at this point. Um. Disappointing in the sense that we won't see where he was going with this, but disappointing in the sense that it didn't come all together. It, it really just didn't. Again, I'll have my, I'll have my review as a more for, for those of you that actually care for my more detailed approach to this. I'll have that link down in the description below. And then lastly, my most disappointing album of the year. I know I'm going to get shit for this. Kid See Ghost. Honestly, dude, coming off of Yay, I was really ready for to hear more of what the kid and yay put together arguably some of them the best collabs of the year and the songs fit the album cover so well so why didn't it stick well it was more of a rock album than a rap and this whole uh i can still feel the love like vibe that followed the entire album just didn't resonate with me at all i don't know what it was i tried so hard i listened to this thing so many times throughout the year after it come out because i kept telling it i'm gonna like it i'm gonna like it i'm gonna like it you know, kind of with the whole Awaken My Love from Jalish Gambino, I kept telling myself, yo, you know, I like this even though I didn't like it initially. I'll, I'll like it eventually. And I just couldn't. There, there, there's some really good moments in these songs. And I can never, I'm, even if I did a review on this, I would still appreciate the hell out of it for what it is. But personally, I just can't. I can't. Nothing about this. I mean, yeah, if you want to say this isn't disappointing and just not my taste, that's perfectly fine. But for me... When I was coming off of Yay and wanting to listen to this, dude, it was such a bum buzzkill that I didn't like like anything. Even Ghost Town Part Two, I just didn't think that was even. I thought Ghost Town Part One was just so much better, and they didn't even need a Part Two, but they made it anyways. And I, don't know, I just couldn't get into. It. I just didn't like it. Something about it just didn't resonate with me. Yeah, it just really disappointed. But anyways guys that is going to do it for today's video i am going to have some more stuff on the way and with that being said i hope you guys all enjoy your day like subscribe comment 
And let, let me know what your top, your favorite albums or Miss Disappointed albums and the favorite song or worst song from that album. And I'll see you all later.